Welcome back, fellow learners. Today we're going to dive deep into a fundamental concept in Java programming, optionals. If you have ever wondered how to handle null values more efficiently or streamline your code's error handling process, you're in the right place. So let's not waste any time and get started with understanding what optionals are all about. Hi, I am Mujib. I'm a self-taught software engineer and former instructor. I know how to learn and teach effectively, and I'm dedicated to sharing my techniques and experience with aspiring developers like yourself. I was in your shoes not a long ago, and I want to reassure you that you are fully capable of becoming a rock star developer. Let's get started. To take this tutorial, you will need the following basic understanding of Java and programming, preferred code editor and focus, which is the first step. Let's do this. We're going to fully grasp optionals in Java. To begin, let's understand the problem that optionals solve. In Java, null values can be a source of unexpected errors and can make code more error prone. Optionals were introduced in Java 8 to tackle this issue by providing a container that may or may not contain a null value. They help us write more robust, reliable, and cleaner code. Read it to see a real example. There are several ways of creating optional objects. To create an empty optional object, we simply need to use its empty static method. Uh, so optional, let's import it. It's a generic class, so if type string, um, let's call it um, empty. Optional dot empty. Uh, System dot out dot print empty. Um, let's see what type of methods it has it has is present stream is empty gate we'll go over some of um, its method and let's use the first method is present um, and let's run this program we get false um, and that makes sense because the optional um, object called empty is actually empty um, and note that we used the is present method to check if there is a value inside of the optional object. Uh, we can also uh, create optional object with the static method off or off nullable, but in case we expect some null values, uh, we can use the off nullable method. Um, next, let's perform conditionals with f present method of an optional. Welcome back. All right, let's talk about uh, or perform some conditional with if present uh, method. Um, let's consider this piece of code. Uh, this code checks if the name variable is null or not before executing some code on it. This approach is lengthy and prone to error. Um, indeed, what guarantees that after this piece of code, we won't use it again without performing the null check. Uh, this can result in a null pointer exception at runtime if name variable happens to be null. Uh, let's um, check that. Let's test it. Uh, name dot length. If we run this program, we get null pointer exception. Uh, but if we run without accidentally causing a null pointer exception, um, it doesn't give us an exception because we are checking for null. On the other hand, optionals make us deal with nullable values explicitly as a way of enforcing good programming practices. Um, let's try the same conditional with the optional. So optional dot um i mean generic string um optional name equals to optional dot off 
let's give it a name um, if we pass a null here and then we hover over the um, off method it says that uh, let's do this uh, let's pass it it says that we are passing a null to a um, optional um, to a static method off that it's um, decorated with not null so if we're as we said if we're ex if you're expecting um, nullable value then you would have to use the off nullable um, method um, but let's try this method with the uh, with this conditional with the off method first let's first pass it a name and then let's go ahead and do our condition so optional name dot f present it takes um, a lambda expression or a consumer as a argument so let's pass it a lambda expression in and then let's just simply log to the console a dot n dot length and then let's run this program we get the length of the name but what happens if we pass it null here if we run this program we still get all null pyter exception um, as I said if we are expecting any null values then we can use the of nullable and this will not cause any um, uh, null pointer exception all right next let's go ahead and talk about default value with or else method all right um, default value with or else or else method is used to retrie retrieve the value wrapped inside of a um, an optional instance it takes one argument uh, which acts as a default value um, for example um, let's say we have a string null name variable and we set that to be null and then another variable string name we want to wrap it inside of a um, optional dot of nullable because we're expecting it um, to be null so null name but we want to have a default value so we use the or or else method and we give it a default let's actually pass it default and then let's log to the console the name variable and run this program we see the default uh, value uh, because this is null but what if um, the null name variable is not null actually it has a name if we run it it actually gets this um, and the value of this variable because it's not null but if it's null it's going to use the default um, default value with or else get method or else get method is similar to or else however instead of taking um, a value to return if the optional is empty um, it takes a supplier functional interface or a lambda expression which is invoked and returns the value of that invocation um, all right um, so let's give an example um, string let's do um, no city uh, let's, um, let's give it an actual value this time uh, at first uh, let's give it San Francisco and a string of city wrap it in a optional dot of nullable because we're expecting no values and pass it the null city but we want to if that city is null we want to uh, return a default value then we can use also the or else get um, but this one will um, accept a, a lambda expression as a argument and we can return anything here we can return for example New York as our um, default value um, and then let's log to the console city and let's run this program we get San Francisco uh, but what if um, this null city is actually null 
If we rerun it now, we get New York, our default value. Exceptions with or else throw. Um, this method follows or else or else get and adds a new approach in handling an absent value. Um, this method, instead of returning a default value uh, when the wrapped value is not present, it throws an, um, an exception. Um, let's uh, demonstrate this by an example. Um, no name, oops, can't spell today. Uh, null name equals to null, and then let's create an actual name variable and wrap it inside of an optional. We want to use of nullable because we're expecting null values. So null name and then dot um, or else throw. Um, now this method, um, let's drop it into new line so you can see it. Um, this method um, can accept or receive um, is expecting an argument um, um, as a lambda expression. Um, so we can, for example, use method reference, uh, like uh, let's do an arg illegal argument exception and then use two colons and new to create a new instance of illegal argument exception. And then let's go ahead and log to the console at the name variable, see what we get. We get a legal argument um, exception. Uh, now, uh, we can also here pass a, um, instead of a method reference, we can pass a lambda expression or a method in line here. Uh, we can create our own um, custom exception, um, a new exception and then give it a custom uh, message like a name cannot be null or something like that. But we are getting a error here uh, saying that we need to handle this exception that is being thrown or we need to add it to the method um, signature that this method is going to throw an exception so that Java can handle it. Here we go. Um, so it throws an exception that is it has a custom message name cannot be no. Um, instead of throwing this here, we could um, or handle let it letting Java to handle it, we could handle it and return it to um, the client. When it comes to coding, one of the best ways to remember what you have just learned is to do another example. So I want to challenge you and give you a homework. Write a Java program that demonstrates the use of optionals in handling null values within a specific scenario of your choice. Test different methods such as or else, or else get, and or else throw to understand their functionalities. Let me know in the comments what else you would like to learn from me. See you next time learners.